this year, the Montesino in Vienna is hosting the biggest game in poker. This is Premier League Poker 5. This is Party Poker Premier League Poker 5. This season, the Games Elite have gathered in Vienna to compete for a piece of a $2.2 million prize pool and a championship title. This is a unique tournament. Our lineup's been split into two groups of eight. They each play four matches in a bid to accumulate points in this league format and progress through to the final table. Let's see what's happened so far. Group A sees Tony G, Luke Schwartz, Phil Locke, Andy Frankenberger, Eric Seidel, Eugene Kachilov, Sam Trickett, and global qualifier Matthew Franklin. Going into their third league match, it was Phil Locke, Tony G, and Sam Trickett at top of the league table, all hoping for big points to race ahead of the pack. At the bottom of the table was Luke Schwartz, who was on just three points. He needed a big result to help keep his Premier League dreams alive. Ace King, you're good, you're good. You're, you've got the best yes, hand, whatever happens. Anyway, it's good to have you back. You kind of, that's a big, nice pop for you, nice lift. Three queens for luck, and we have lost our first player. Sorry, Eugene. Yep. All I need is just some paint and an unfavor. Schwartz, this is it for him. He's going to grab two points. That is going to put Luke Schwartz on five points. You didn't have the heart. I told you, you're missing the heart. This is where I test my luck. Yeah. All right, see you guys. One more battle. Oh. Six points for Tony G. I think he should take a little more heart. For Eric Seidel, third place. That will be well deserved. This is for big stakes. Group A is open. This is going to be really exciting as things go on. So this is Group A's league table after three matches. The field is wide open, and any of our Group A players can still make it to the final table. A certain combination could even see Tony G fall into the elimination zone. It will be an exciting conclusion when they return for their last league match. On the other side of the draw, Group B is made up of Tom Dwan, Jungle Man, Patrick Antonius, Vanessa Selp, Yevgeny Timoshenko, Elki, Scott Seaver and our second place global qualifier, Ben Wilanowski. They have played two heats so far. The last game turned out to be a roller coaster ride for some players. Vanessa Self and Ben Wilanowski went down to a chip and a chair and fought back to avoid the eighth place finish. We're just gonna find this sit and go forever. For Scott Seaver, he'll be very surprised and I guess kind of unlucky to be going out first in this heat. That sounds good. He's going to be really disappointed after having one chip spin up and just lose it there on a flip. Good news. It's Elki all in. All Timoshenko right. is going to get him here and send Elki out to the rail. Patrick's going to be really disappointed with the outcome of this heat, like being really big chip leader, somehow scratching your head on the rail now. Daniel Cates is out chipped something like four and a half to one here. All in. Avoid the trap. I think I'm trapping you. I got, I got reverse trapped. These are Group B standings after two matches. Wins for Patrick Antonius and Yevgeny Timoshenko see them in the top three. Timoshenko is tied with Jungle Man Cates, who came third in Heat 1 and second in Heat 2. There is a big divide between the final table and the playoff zone. Scott Seaver is on 11. He took the bagel in Heat 2. Vanessa Selps is on 10. In the elimination zone is Tom Dwan, Elki, and Benjamin Wilanowski. They have a lot of work to do in their third league match. I'm thrilled to be joined by someone who had a great third match in Group A, Premier League newbie Eric Seidel. Now, Eric, one of the things about Premier League poker that's a little bit different from other tournaments is this idea that players 
get to see what other players had after the hands. Have you used that at all, and have you been surprised by any of the results? Yeah, I think what you're finding is that on, on every break, the players are all checking to see what happened, whether somebody's been bluffing, how aggressive players have been, and how much bluffing has been going on. And it does change the dynamic. In your third group match, you performed very well. You were in a very tricky position being mid-table going into the match. Did you look at the leaderboard and did that affect like who you went after? I think for the third match, I really was just trying to play straightforward. I was just trying, you know, I, I was trying to win or come in second or, you know, have, have a good result. I really wasn't thinking that much about the points. Um, you know, that was just the position I was in. But I think that, the, you know, the points were relevant to other people. Um, uh, more relevant to them because some of them were in do or die situations and some of them had to uh, you know get a safer lead well we've got a really interesting situation here in group B three players all at the top of the pack and four others really mid table so it's going to be exciting to see how they use those tactics in their favor group B is off and running for this third match and this is exciting on a lot of levels not least because Next to a poker hero of mine, Eric Seidel. Eric, I don't, I've never really heard you talk much about poker before. Are you looking forward to, to being on this side of the, the table? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I'm particularly curious about these matchups because uh, you have so many uh, really, really excellent players that play at a very high level at this table. Um, and the third match, of course, uh, you know, it, it starts to get exciting because the points come into effect. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how things go. This group, different than your group, Group A, uh, in the early levels has featured a lot more three betting and even four betting, even in the first two levels. Um, although right now here we have a an open from Scott Seaver. This could be really dangerous, yeah, because uh, I think Tom played this very quietly. Uh, and he, 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 it's very possible this, ha this uh, could get very big. I mean, you also, I think in your third match, uh, sort of regarded the tens in the first level more as a, a set mining sort of pair than a, than a big pair. And because Wilanowski has just oh, two cool. points, you know, you, you kind of think he's going to be taking chances early. Yeah, well, I mean, that that's the problem for Tom here is that uh, I think that he has to suspect that uh, Ben may be making a play uh, just because of the situation. So this could be a very troublesome situation for him. The re-raise three-bet size is quite large up to 22,000. I mean, we've already got a big pot here. And with Tom being in position, if it comes a low flop. Wow kind of the end of Wilanowski. Are, are, I mean, do you think if you're Wilanowski, you're actually not feeling bad about getting? This is a, such a difficult spot for him okay. to be in because yeah, you've got the two clubs there. Uh, so it's, it's really hard for him to, you know, to, not to lose a lot of chips on this one. And he's, you think he's taking this a check call line here or a, a check raise line? I think he's looking to check raise. Tell me what you Third know about four. the way Tom Dwan plays. What's his strengths? I mean, uh, well, I mean, Tom, he doesn't miss anything. He's very aggressive. Uh, you know, he's really one of the standouts of the young guns. Ben Wilanowski, so impressive in the qualifiers. Uh, in many ways, the unlucky man in this Group B so far. Two. And oh. he's just gone for a call here. I mean, this is the kind of, when, when you're doing this, are you sort of looking to reevaluate the turn? Like if it comes, you know, a big club or something, you can give it up. And you can't give it up now, can you? He's, a very, he's in a very interesting spot. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, he's, he's taking a funny line here because if he bets out, if he, if he bet out originally, um, there's a chance he can get off it. At this point, I think, you know, I think it's very difficult for him uh, if he can, you know, if he can get away from this. It would really be, it would really be a great laydown. At this stage, Tom is just pretty much going for stacks. Seven to two. I mean, it, if you're Tom, you're not even thinking to yourself, well, if he has ace king, I want to check back and try and get a bet on the river. You just, you just go for it. 
Yeah, I mean, this is really the critical spot for Ben. He's got to figure out if he's beat and throws it away. You know, it would, it would really be a nice lay down. We were talking several times uh, throughout the heats in this group that Tom has this reputation uh, where he just gets action all the time. But that said, uh, in the, the two heats so far, he hasn't really pulled off any monster bluffs. He hasn't made these big three barrel things with no hand. Essentially, he's played he's played rather tight. So, right, which, yeah. Which, which doesn't mean that he's not capable, I guess. Right, right. Well, that, that, that's one of the things that makes him so difficult to play against because he is capable of playing so fast. And uh, it, it's hard really to, to oh, this is a bad card for, uh, for, ben, card for, ben. for, for ben because it, it just makes it, 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 it okay. makes him think it's less likely that, that Tom has, uh, that, that Tom flopped a set. Now, Wilanowski has about 170,000 back. Obviously, it's the first hand, so uh, the all-in bet is, is probably the bet. Do you ever call the turn and fold this kind of blank river? Oh, yeah, that does it's happen for sure. I mean, it, you know, Ben certainly seems to have a sense that he's in, he's in some trouble here. Um, but the, the spot that he's in is very difficult because he's playing against a guy who has a reputation for being super aggressive and, uh, and certainly might bluff in this spot. It's hard not to be sympathetic to Ben's situation <laughs> here. <laughs> it really is. I mean, he's just, he's just really t caught in a bad spot. That card just complicates things. He's had a miserable Premier League so far, Wilanowski. I'm sure he came in here thinking, just put a couple points on the board, put yourself in a position where you, there he oh, goes. Quads. Yeah. Oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's tough, that's really tough. That's so hard. All right, so n now he's in a position where he's, uh, is he completely out? He's it'll it'll certainly depend on how the results today, but I'm sure Wilanowski will be in a spot where he'll need to get first place in his fourth heat just to make the, the playoffs, perhaps, um, and have results go his way to boot. Um, and for Tom Dwan, who has been playing great this whole Premier League, but might have felt he didn't get the rub of the green, this is his chance to make some hay. We lose Ben first here in this heat. Obviously, you had to come in going for a win. Did that play into your decision making? A little bit, yeah. I think if I had been sort of in the middle of the pack, uh, I certainly wouldn't have three bet to begin with. But I, I definitely needed to be playing aggressively to accumulate chips. And um, I got into a spot where I had to call off my stack, only beating a bluff. And I, I went for it, and I was wrong. We are down to seven players after just one hand, and Tom Dwan has taken the big chip lead. Action continues after the break. Ben Wilanowski has been knocked out in last place and leaves with zero points. Unfortunately, he now has no chance of making the final table. We're left with seven in this Premier League match. Back over to your commentary team, Jesse May and Eric Seidel. This, uh in this Premier League here. Tom Dwan there, a little smile. And, you know, we've seen quads and now four times here in Group D. That was the first one that got paid off, and boy, did it get paid off. Is this part of the magic of Tom Dwan in a sense that uh, everything he has done in his career up to this point sort of enables you to get that kind of action? Yeah, I think it is. It's sort of part of his persona, you know. He's a young guy, you know. He's got, he's just got this kind of a... Uh, you know, Don't somewhat goofy flush. demeanor, oh, and uh, you know, you, you just feel like, well, he could be putting me on here. He just has that, he, he just has that, uh, that kind of personality, and I think it does help him. Six It really is brutal, I think. I can't when I get quads for that. So cool. <laughs> Sugar quads. Jungle bed. And he calls the raise on the button with the queen seven of hearts. Four of spades. One, two, three, shoot. 
Looking at a three-way flop. The way Patrick has played these two nines, uh, much more typical. Patrick and Tom Dwan and Jungle Man have all seemed to look at flops as much as they can while they still have the opportunity against these other tournament players who seem to be doing more of the three betting and four betting. Right, all right, so Jungle Man flops the best hand here. Have you talked much with Patrick about his experiences here so far? He, there was a couple of spots he's been in, Eric, which he just seems to feel like this is why he doesn't like tournaments so much, you know. No, really. <laughs> no I haven't. I, oh, I, I, I did hear yet uh, on the way over here. He was uh, he was upset because he, he lost an unlucky hand, and had he not lost that hand, uh, he wouldn't have gotten into the cash game, and, which cost him an extra 200000 <laughs> so. <laughs> so he's blaming it on the on the cards from the heat. Right. Right. Patrick is, you know, a player that uh, certainly has a lot of tricks up his sleeves, and he could check the best like hand that. here. Like uh, <laughs> or, you know, he could check, certainly could check any queen that he has in his hand would be better than Jungle Man, so he might check it. You get the, I always get the feeling that when Jungle Man and Patrick sort of are in a pot together, when they look at each other, they don't actually see each other's face. It's more like has something to do with the thousand or ten thousand hands they've played online. You kind of see all the calculations. Yeah, I mean, I think Jungle Man just sees Patrick as a a, a HUD, which is that the software that. <laughs> Really accurate. How has that card changed anything? Well, I mean, I, I do think that it would make Patrick more likely to bluff, um, but I, I it just, just gets checked down. And <laughs> he does not like to show his cards. No, I don't think he likes to show his cards, and he's probably a little bit surprised that uh, a Jungle Man played the Queen Seven there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's really a, it's, it's not a premium hand. Daniel has seemed to get more relaxed at every stage of this Premier League, and obviously it's him, Patrick, and and Yevgeny sort of in a really interesting spot because. If one of them finishes in the top three, uh, it looks mathematically that they're guaranteed a top three spot um, you know, as far as going to the final table. Um, Raise. Whereas the, there's, there's not as much downside of going out early for them. So yeah, as you noted before, they, they, they do seem to in the, in the early rounds uh, be playing flops and not, not three betting as much. I mean, as far as Tom Dwan, and Jungle Man's playing every hand here, but as far as Tom Dwan calling with the ace king, um, for you, is it just that kind of thing? Sometimes you call, sometimes you raise, it's just a, it could be either? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's an odd spot, especially the first level of it. Uh, you know, it's a hand that, uh, you don't want, really want to go broke on. Um, on the other hand, it doesn't play all that well uh, multi-way. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure Tom would have preferred to be heads up. Which check are you the, the most surprised about uh, on that board? I mean, Vanessa Vanessa's checked the, the, the nut flush draw, then Tim Oshenko's now checked the kings, and Dwan, in second to last position, checked ace king. That's it, that seemed very unusual. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's kind of odd. I think, I think, uh, I guess Tom is going for deception here, and maybe he just feels like uh, he doesn't want to get too involved in the in the early going, especially with the chip lead. Uh, so he's so he's being you know super extra cautious. But I am surprised it got checked around that first round for sure. It feels like call is the only option for Dwan. You know, he he just wants to find out where he is. He doesn't want to, you know, this 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 way he gets to define his hand. 
very difficult for him to get any better hand to fold, though, wouldn't you say? I mean... Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just, he's just testing it out, and, uh, you know, he doesn't want to get... He, I think he also doesn't want to be in a spot where another club comes off because he feels like if somebody doesn't have clubs already, that they'll win. So this is his way of isolating uh, in case he has the best hand, and if he doesn't, uh, you know, he, he just gets to, to give it up. She actually really does have a difficult decision because she's just trying to figure out how she can maximize her hand here. Uh. Right, and the um, if you if you call you you really have to check the river too, don't you? Being in first position, I mean, maybe not all rivers, but by taking the lead here, this is. She's not going to get on, obviously, but this is probably the best way of trying to get on. Yeah, well, I mean, she's, she's re-raising, hoping that he has that he has two clubs. Um, or ho and also, if he has a set, she doesn't want to give him a free chance at filling up. Um, he's made the fold. Yeah, so, I mean, he, he got to find out where he stood and uh, didn't lose anymore. And uh, if his hand was good, he would have won it right there. This morning. Today is really crucial. Uh, today is probably the most important heat, I would say, in terms of really defining uh, who's going to be moving forward into the final table. You know, we've got three people that have done uh, really well in the first two heats and look like they could pull away with it. And uh, the rest of us are kind of in the middle of the pack right now, um, towards the bottom. So if I don't get points today, then, you know, it's going to be really difficult for me to move on. So today's a really crucial heat to do well in. Vanessa, Scott Seaver, Tom Dwan, very bunched up, and, and Elke as well. So there is this idea that there's a mini tournament going on between those four. And so you said, Eric, that you think it's a little overcomplicating matters to think about it right now. Um, we were speculating in your third heat, Group A's third heat, that it seemed like you and Sam Trickett particularly we're getting into it and that that had something to do with the uh, with the group dynamics but maybe it was more hand related oh well, I, I was thinking about Sam a little bit but I, I don't uh, I'm, I'm not really sure uh, yeah it wasn't just the, the way the hands came up but but he you know he was the, he's the he was the person one point ahead of me and so if I had passed him it would have been a, a significant for me. Uh, obviously, these same players playing in all the heats. The seat draws are always different. Uh, particularly looking at this lineup of Selbst and Seaver and Timoshenko, I know that this is the first time, I believe, that Timoshenko's had position on Selbst. And I believe the first time that Seaver has as well. So <laughs> this, uh, is, this is a funny hand because Vanessa bet out into the two aces, uh, which actually could be a gift uh, to Yevgeny because uh, it, it may allow him to get off the hand early. Um, but he has a lot of options here. And he's. Uh, I mean, a lot of players would have three bet with Scott Seaver's hand. Uh, or at least on this table. Okay, so he did correctly get off it. That's a I disciplined mean, fold, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good fold, and it looks like it would have saved him some money as well, um, because this ace on the turn is really uh, would have really hurt him. <laughs> but that's the selves may have just saved him half a stack. <laughs> Omaha, 
Scott Seaver has been the player in this uh, group who has been making the biggest bets in relation to the pot. He seems to have this, but he bets big. It's, I know this isn't a, a huge bet. This is maybe two thirds of the pot, but he, he's often bet pot size or more. Um, and does this feel to you like a value bet? Well, I mean, Vanessa really didn't have much. She, you know, she had a fourth pair and was, you know, uh, trying to pick it up on the flop. And uh, just she, it just happened she was against two aces, so she was in a tough spot. These players are all guaranteed now at least two points. Um, but the fact that Wilanowski was the one knocked out actually doesn't change a thing for the top seven. It's a big difference between obviously the top three and the bottom four right now. So it feels like not just seven players for five spots. It feels more like four players for two spots in a sense. Which player at this table do you sort of feel like you've been in the most interesting spots against, you know, in, in tournaments that maybe has put you in a difficult spot before? I've, I've, had, I've played a fair amount with Scott. Uh, Scott's done pretty well against me also. Um, and, uh, but, you know, pretty much all of them are, are you know, fascinating to watch. Ray's here from Vanessa, uh, second to speak, and called on the button by Yevgeny. This is, I want to say unusual for Patrick, but he's he's not a massive three better. In fact, he's had quite a narrow range. This feels like a hand that he would almost always take a flop off with instead, Eric. I mean. Well, it's kind of an interesting thing because I I think that the, the queen jack, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a weak hand, uh, so you sort of want to you sort of want to play it because it's so pretty, uh, but it doesn't really hold up all that well multi-way, um, and so I think that he's kind of, you know, obviously he would just like to take it right here, and uh, you know, I think it's just one of those situations where. Vanessa's been playing a, a fair amount of pots, and with the, the Evgeny just calling, wow. Oh <laughs> so, this is unbelievable. Yeah, you've just come in here to confirm that everything's rigged, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> um, <coughs> wow, this is really, uh, this is going to be interesting. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, it, it, if there'll be a point, um, when either of these players can avoid doing their stack. Obviously, Antonius's hand with the jack kicker isn't. There comes a point when you realize it might not be be super strong, or is that just not going to be a case here? Let's we'll see. It, it's really a, a judgment call. If he if he feels like Patrick doesn't have a queen, then he just wants to play it slowly and allow him to hang himself. Um, that's a scary card for you, Kenny. Because he's he you know he has to be concerned that uh, now that Patrick could have ace queen or or aces full of queens. Um, if Patrick bets again, and I'm I'm guessing he will bet again. But if he bets again, what does it mean if you're Yevgeny? You know, as far as like polarizing his hand. Well, I mean, one of the funny things about the ace coming is that it's it's also a bluffing card. So with Patrick re-raising. Uh, Yevgeny can, uh, I mean, it, uh, in reality, it's maybe it's a good card for Yevgeny in the sense that it's more likely that Patrick just hit his, you know, aces up, uh, or, um, you know, it, it's also a big bluffing card as well. If Patrick had ace king, he would have played it exactly like this, right? Yeah. Re-raise, bet the flop, check the turn because you're going for pot control. Exactly. And just to carry that a step further, Patrick knows that. So when Timoshenko, when Timoshenko bets here, either either he's way ahead of Ace King or way behind, right? He's checking almost everything else. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you have to think that Patrick still thinks his hand is good. But at the end of the day, we're just watching another cooler like we watched this, before. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, it's just he's, it's just a very tough spot for him to be in. 
It's and not he like doesn't know how to play it. I, I think that, uh, okay, well, I mean, that's that's a very conservative line. Um, you know, I, I, I think maybe he's he, he feels like he might be in trouble here. It's amazing. Obviously, you know, you play in some of these tournaments where you're hundreds and hundreds of big blinds deep. You can't make magic, can you? I mean, there's only so much you can do on, on these stack sizes. But Antonius seems like he's going to find a way not to uh, not to go broke here. It's a funny spot because if if, if Kenny doesn't know he's good, he's concerned that he's got the, the you know. But he's just going to take the chance. And he's gone for what looks like just over half the pot. Does that make Patrick more or less likely to call? I think for Patrick to lay this hand down would really be a fantastic uh, read. I mean, but he, you can you can tell he feels it. You know, he he's he uh, he's obviously very concerned. Call. Uh, he was not happy about that yeah. at all. No, he 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 felt it. I think he knew where he was, but the situation was impossible. It's just a, a it's, it's just a spot where you can't fold your hand. That that was the, kind of the flop you're hoping for if you have queen jack. Sixty-three thousand left for Patrick. We've only played six hands. Uh, this seems conspiring to be over with in a hurry. It's a juice deck, yeah. For those at home, it's, uh, it, this is a very exciting match for, uh, for the first few hands. We'll be back after the break as Group B's third league match continues here in Vienna. Welcome back to Season 5 of the Premier League Poker from the stunning Austrian city, Vienna. Group B is back in action in their third league match. The players are battling it out to progress through to the final table, and they're awarded points for where they finish. It's 16 points for a win, 11 for the runner-up, and then 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, and 0 points for the player in last place. Let's rejoin your commentary team, Jesse May and Eric Seidel. As much as people would like this Premier League to be a, a sort of a referendum on on which of the 12 or 16 players in the Premier League is the best, it, there is a certain element that the player who runs the best is going to have a very good chance. Race. The player who runs the worst is going to be in trouble. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can see that from the Tom Dwan hand and this last hand. Uh, you know, neither guy did anything wrong or unreasonable, um, and, and both lost a lot of chips. It was just uh, sometimes these situations just come up. Six raised fourteen. And, uh, you know, in an individual match, it's it, it, so five raised fourteen. It, so it's it can really bury you. Okay, so what happened here? Well, uh, Scott's open to five, and Timoshenko's three bet to fourteen. Um, Scott Seaver, in the first two heats, was. By, by far the player who opened the most pots. Um, you know, probably in the neighborhood of 35% of or more, uh, all, all kinds of hands. And, and I guess this is a really deceptive dynamic by him just to, just to call the three bet. Now, this is probably overall the ninth or tenth time that Yevgeny has come over the top of his opening raise. And they, they've played quite a few pots together. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's always fun when you get two of these young guys, uh, young aggressive players together, and uh, it, it creates the most interesting pots. Do you foresee this? Would be checked down now, perhaps. I mean, Yevgeny would would check quite a few hands back. Uh, that still beat Ace King, right? A lot of jacks and pocket pairs. Yeah, I think I, I think so. I mean, it, uh, it's it is interesting to to check the. Uh, well, I mean. Checking the flop and betting the river. A lot of people would uh, would take the free card on the river. 
Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, well, there, there you go. Aggressiveness, uh, winning a few extra chips for him. Yevgeny's in a, a position he hasn't been in at any stage of this Premier League. He's got a nice stack. He's got a nice point total. A real opportunity here for him to put pressure on these players like Vanessa and Scott. Now he, he won the second heat, right? Yes, but it was, uh, you know, it was coming from way behind. Wow, look sense. at this. Well, so right. Vanessa has aces and Scott has ace king suited. That's really a uh, very conservative to just call there. It is, especially against Vanessa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She opens a lot of pots. Uh, but the one thing we've seen about Vanessa, though, is is uh, she'll four bet nearly as often as, <laughs> as she'll open if given the opportunity. Oh my gosh! Look at this. <laughs> this wow. just feels crazy. This is a juice deck they're playing with today. I do feel like we haven't seen any fives through deuces yet. Maybe they've just taken them out of the deck. But even just that little move there that Scott Seaver made, which is just calling with the ace king, and I guess a lot of people wouldn't do it, Eric. Overall, it, I guess it prevents you in this format from going broke early on so much more often. Yeah, I think in the, uh, particularly in the first uh, and second level, uh, you know, players don't want to get too involved with, with a hand like ace-king because now if you get four bet, you really don't know where you are and you don't want to get your chips in when you're dead, which would have been the case here. Uh, he was probably an 11, 12 to 1 underdog before the before the flop. And, uh, and now he's given himself an opportunity to win the pot. Vanessa selves. I mean, she does have a reputation on on tour for just being super aggressive. Um, you wouldn't immediately think of her as a player who's going to make big laydowns, would you? Yeah. Well, that, that's uh, she. She's she is an aggressive player. Great check. I mean, should should she actually start thinking about folding here, or is it? Well, one of the problems with being an aggressive player is that you are concerned that somebody is playing against you, uh, against your reputation. So, uh, you know, for instance, a few hands ago when she was playing with Scott, she bet out uh, into two players without an ace. And so she, you know, she's already shown some early aggressiveness in this match. And that really works against her because in her head she's thinking well is he just t taking advantage of the fact that i've been involved in a lot of pots uh or does he legitimately have a hand i mean the other thing is just psychologically it's so difficult to pick up a hand like aces uh that once you get it it just becomes you know uh very hard to get off um, scott siever did sort of make a, well, I guess it really wasn't similar to this, but did kind of make a three barrel bluff against Patrick and it involved a bet on the river that was just over pot size and Patrick laid a fairly big hand down. Um, <laughs> she's not happy, big sigh from Vanessa, but you knew it was coming if you're Vanessa, right? Yeah. You just knew. But it is, it, it definitely is one of these things that it, it's harder for her to play the situation than another person because of because of her uh, aggressiveness. I have to actually think. First two were automatic, and this one. That sounds good for me. What? Sounds good for me. Sounds like I made a good fold if it was automatic. These two know each other very well, not just from these three Premier League matches, but I know that 
They both respect each other's games. Yeah. Uh, I mean, both are tournament superstars. Yeah. Oh. Everybody just calling all the time. This is uh, this is one crazy heat so oh, far. We've had some wild hands so yeah. far. How many hands in, into it are we? Like yeah, less no. than a dozen for sure. Nine hands in, and uh, <laughs> there have already been at least three coolers. Nice bets. Bet, and I was gonna fold many bets, so it was small. Vanessa down to sixth uh, after being up well above her starting Once. stack. And what an emotional roller coaster she's she actually has been on throughout this Premier League. And certainly, many people do believe that Daniel Cates uh, is, a, is a guy who, oh, along with Tom Dwan, perhaps, and, and the one known as Isildur completely changed the way people view uh, heads up hold them. Yeah, well, that's um, Tom and Jungle Man uh, are, are actually uh, in, in the midst of a, of a big uh, heads up match. Uh, they, Tom issued a million dollar challenge and uh, to anyone in the world and uh, the Jungle Man took him up on it. I mean, I, one of the big things, I, I, you know, I'm not even sure if Tom is uh, playing on the internet anymore. He's, uh... yeah, I think he's focus, focusing his, his energies on Macau at the moment. He's in the big blind here. It was raised by Scott Seaver. Tom just called for the big blind. And this is something 9, that you don't see too often just leading into the razor, Eric. I mean, most people look at it as weak, don't they, the top players? Yeah, yeah it's true that, uh, that for the most part, people people will check in that spot. And uh, cool. it, it's, uh, sorry, it does make it harder to put him on a range of hands. Yeah, and if you're trying to put time on something, you don't put him on that. Do you? Isn't it usually kind of like sort of a a weak draw, maybe, or? A... Yeah, I think I, I I I think Scott would be surprised that, that that he had nothing. Yeah, you would think that he either has a pair he's testing out, or he has some type of a draw. Scott's in an odd position. I mean, this is the advantage of having position is that uh, he gets to see Tom act first. It's very important in this spot. And uh, and Tom gets there. So. <laughs> it's Tom's turn. Yeah. I mean, of course, Tom only has ace nine. So he, he even though, uh, you know, the, the ace wins the wins it for him, he, he can't have that much confidence in it because it's very easy for Scott to have an ace as well. Seven, that's <laughs> Scott is so done. He's been making, I don't think he's put a foot wrong in this entire Premier League. I don't know what you're trying to do on that end. Just trying to get old chips. Not even through the first level yet, but the chips have completely swung around. Tom, when you hold your hand and you look it up, I can see it right sometimes. Elke has been largely silent this Premier League. I think he's been very handcuffed being card dead, Eric, but I think. I heard so much about his aggressive style that I was still expecting a lot more flash. I mean, what, what do you know about Elke's game? Well, I, I, he certainly has a reputation for aggressiveness, uh, but he's also a very smart player, and he knows he's, he's in a group of aggressive players. 
and I, I, you know, I think particularly with this uh, this format, it kind of encourages people in the first two rounds not to get too involved. Uh, you know, I think you're seeing that as the people, you know, are trying to avoid big pots. It's interesting the line that Elke has taken on this one because he called, uh, and, uh, and now he's betting out on the turn. What does it suggest to you if you're Timoshenko? I mean, obviously, he's trying to represent that the queen helped his hand, or that he d and he's scared of giving Timo a free card? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a difficult spot. He has a very good hand. And I, there, there's no way he's throwing it away at this point. But, uh, all right, well, this is interesting. That's that's a good card for Yevgeny, for sure. And, uh, I guess he takes it. Elke done, I guess, with it. <laughs> so many players have just checked back there. Timo's trying to find the value bet, if there is one. Yeah, that, that's, he's, uh, he's, his game is so razor sharp that he's really just trying to figure out what, what the exact, okay, well, he didn't, uh, he didn't want to take the chance on getting check raised in that spot, which is understandable. Where is the rest of that spot? Timoshenko takes it down. He looks so mild-mannered, you know, especially with the yeah. sweater vest and the collar. Uh, <laughs> when he, uh, I guess when he broke into the poker world, he was the one on everyone's lips as the craziest, most aggressive tournament player in the world. I, I mean, are you familiar with when he won that WPT championship? Uh, he must have played that year. Um, Couple I, of years ago, I didn't. I didn't see the final table, but uh, but I've, I've certainly seen his results, and uh, you can't help but notice. Uh, you know, he he kind of ran over the poker tournament world for a couple of years. He's yeah. really he's a really tough player. Tom sure looks tired today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's that jet lag's finally caught up with him. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so signal three raise 5,000. Four. And this, the whole thing, you know, when Seaver had that ace jack, he just called Vanessa's raise the in the small king. blind. Yeah. He did it with the ace king. He done it with the jack nine. What do you do? What do you do with a guy like Scott Seaver when he just calls you every time? <laughs> he is very, very tough to play against, I have to say. Wow, well, that's a that's a pretty lousy flop for Vanessa's hand. I guess it's kind of funny because, well, that's <laughs> yeah, Kenny. Um, on the one hand, you should be really happy when a guy just calls every time you raise because you feel like, well, then I'll be in position and I'll have the best hand. But if you're Vanessa and you like to open a lot and you're opening rather weak, it's no fun, really, is it? Should Yevgeny always raise, never raise, sometimes raise? Well, it is a funny spot that he's in because he has to be concerned about a flush uh, and he has to be concerned about an ace-10. Uh, but it's also very easy for Scott to be bluffing here. Um, Scott has to assume that Vanessa has anything, so he could be on a pure bluff. I find that a surprising raise, Eric, because it's like when you raise there, you're kind of saying, well, you're not saying it, but I mean, you're willing to let the hand go if you get get too much more action, right? Yeah, it's, um, I think he just wants to test his hand out, uh, similar to the situation that Tom Dwan was in earlier. And, uh, Four check. I, I, you know, I don't mind the raise. Of course, he l does leave himself vulnerable for getting re-raised if Scott has the ace of spades. Um, <laughs> 
The two different, I mean, Yevgeny, he, he looks just angry all the time, and Scott <laughs> tries to pretend that he's asleep. It's sort of, but they're both very, very acutely aware, right? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I mean, Scott, really, uh, I, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure he's through with it now. <laughs> Sam was saying that Scott sort of signature move this head over on his, uh, you know, with his elbow resting on his hand and uh, looking like he's half asleep, but uh, obviously oh, there's not. On the floor. Not it, but Chip leader. Wow. It's going to be fascinating to see. This is really, really hands. early. You know, the blinds are still one in 2,000. Two players over 500K. Scott Seaver up to 400. This is going to start feeling yeah, more like, like a cash people, game, sorry. Yeah, exactly. These people have a, they, they have an unusual amount of large stacks, considering the, how small the blinds are. Seven gold. Receiver was somewhere between 80 to 100 percent as far as raising his button when it got folded around to him. And then I guess in the second level, this is probably all in for Patrick. Uh, looks like Patrick's going to go for the check raise here, I would think. No? That's He's discipline. Conser conserving his chips. <laughs> I mean, 99% of poker players would just make an exasperated shove to the center with their chips, wouldn't they? Yeah, especially once you get low. <laughs> you, you know, you're happy to have some piece of the flop and you take a chance. <laughs> Scott correctly bets the turn, which is very interesting because I think Scott figured that if he had an ace, he would have been ra he would have been raised. Uh, why has Patrick taken this line? I mean, he, you're never gonna win when you miss, in a sense, are you? Well, we may find out right now. <laughs> no, I guess he checked it. Okay. Eighteen thousand. Scott bet the river there, too. Wow. Yeah. What was that about? That's kind of an odd bet. I'm not sure what that was. 21 hands. That's end of the first level. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of easy to just say the story, Eric, has been all just the, the coolers and the big hands. Has there been any more subtlety for you than that? You know, there have been some very difficult hands to play so far. I don't think anybody's really gotten out of line too much. And... Uh, you know, as the blinds go up, I th you know, certainly we'll see a lot more action among this group. The remaining players in Group B's third league match continue to battle it out here in Vienna for maximum points after the break. Welcome back to Premier League Poker 5. There's still seven at the table of Group B's third league match. Let's head back to your commentary team. Anymore? Group B as it Think stands. Yevgeny Timoshenko, who's the current chip leader right now, looking, or at least among them, looking poised to, to top Group B, where if Antonius goes out in seventh as the short stack, it will kind of throw open the possibility of him having to fight to make a, get an automatic berth to the final. There are a bunch of people that are right on the precipice here where if they make a mistake here, they're, they're, they're either out of it or in a very difficult spot. Uh, and I, I do think that's come into play already. Uh, this, is, this is definitely Vanessa's game. And... 
And certainly, Eric, um, the dyna there's a dynamic here, which is that Duan has been opening a lot of pots. Um, that's why she's doing this, right? 220. I mean, isn't there this thing, though, about facing, if you're Duan and facing Vanessa, even though you know that this may be a, a pretty good hand, you have to decide if once you start, like, four betting, you pretty much have to be willing to play against her whole stack. Yeah, I mean, she does She does put you in difficult spots. Uh, that's what this aggressiveness can do, and, and Tom is trying to figure out. Ace-Queen is not that strong a hand, but but she she does tend to three bet a lot. And... Uh, Peeling, I mean, Tom. peeling the flop is not a terrible decision, is it? No, but I think Tom doesn't want to play it out of position is the problem because uh, just so often you'll lose it. Uh, and uh, and so he correctly makes the re-raise. And this pretty much commits him. He's he's going to go, you know, uh, I he's, he's taking the chance that he has the best hand or she'll fold the hand she has. It She's was, certainly capable. It was a good read by Tom. You have to give him credit because uh, Ace Queen is not a premium hand. Uh, I mean, it's a premium hand, but it's not, uh, you know, a, a, against uh, re-raising range. It, you know, he, he could be in a difficult spot. So he read this one correctly. Yeah, and if Vanessa goes all in, we're talking now about like 50 big blinds, and ace queen in a 50 big blind scenario is not that good, is it? I mean, yeah, exactly. If, if if he were to get action from her, he wasn't yeah, going to be happy. Yeah, uh, huh? Just trying it on once, maybe. I thought it was you were doing the look back at the card, the, the bluff cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have the best hand. You fold it. Yeah, the best hand. Um, looks like he is about to fall asleep, but he doesn't. He doesn't really miss much. <laughs> he's got. He's just got that natural sort of. I don't know poker color. You know, it's 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 like a robust sallow. I would call it. I don't know. It's kind of um, it's pale, but it's it's not too pale. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna up. So yeah, Getty's got to make a decision here against the Elky Open, who has now that the lines are two and four thousand, somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty bigs. That's such a tough spot for you, Getty. He doesn't want to play jacks out of position. Uh, it's a it it's an excellent hand, uh, but they both have a lot of chips. He's gone for a very small three bet, I believe. Up to 28,000. Which, you know, I mean, you could see Yevgeny be willing to throw these away if he gets too much heat, right? He's in a really solid spot in the chips. This is, this is a tough call from Elke. Uh, I mean, he's... It's just unlikely that Evgeny's going to be making a play from that spot. And he flops a set. This is very dangerous. That may have just been under the heading of I'm due from LK, you know. It could have been. <laughs> well, also, he hadn't played a lot of hands. And some, sometimes you just you just want to be in in the game. You know, you feel like you're not really involved. This is a pot control live from Evgeny. You like this, keeping all the hands in, you beat. Is that the idea? I mean, is it, is it almost turning your hand face up in a sense, though? Is that kind of a problem with it? Well, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. When, once you've re-raised, uh, generally people will bet out in that spot. But uh, if Kenny is playing this a little bit cautiously. And, and I mean, obviously, we know Elke's got three sevens. It's really strong. But if you don't have three sevens, what do you start thinking Timoshenko has? Do you think he has now a flush draw, aces, kings, that kind of stuff? I think that uh, that it, he's 
He's playing it as if he has aces or kings. That would have been really funny, actually. Now that Oki does that, it's, it's, it, it has to be a set or a bluff, right? I mean, a set or a draw. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think, I think Evgeny is probably through with it. The problem is there's so much money in the pot now. <laughs> he's afraid that there's some, like, small chance that Elki could, could, uh, could have a flush. Uh, but I think he's going to be able to get off this. All right. Interestingly, uh, Evgeny is not a, a non-believer here. Yeah, and uh, like you know, there is that sort of idea. Well, they could just <laughs> they could just throw the jack of hearts up there. The problem make is that easy. now there's so many chips in the pot, and this is a very bad card for Evgeny uh, because uh, it it makes him think that Elki may not have a queen. It just makes it a little less likely that Elki has one of the two remaining queens, and. Now the problem is there's so much money in the pot, it's, it's it, you end up sort of pricing yourself in. Jungle Man, when he was watching the other heats, he was talking about sort of high variance and low variance approaches to playing hands. I mean, Timoshenko has taken an approach at every stage of this hand that was just going to be you're going to win a big pot or have to make an uncomfortable fold or so Elki makes a great check here because uh, it's going to be very hard now for Yevgeny to throw his hand away. Wow. Well, that was a really uh, clever check, wasn't that's a, it? That's a really excellent check given how much, how much he has left in chips. And you know what? El Elki really played it well by checking the full house. And so you have to carry on the really there and just check call. You, just in case Elki's going to bluff it, give him the chance, right? And there we go. How much is that? I know it's a small thing, but I do feel like. It's a slightly more effective if Elki, because Patrick's so short, Eric, that Elki should leave himself twenty or thirty thousand back. You know what I'm saying? Because you would do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that it really matters at this point. I think that, uh, uh, you know, there's so much money in the pot. It's almost four hundred thousand. So in Yevgeny's mind, he's getting almost four to one. On, uh, you know, on an Elki bluff, or even Elki having like two tens or two nines, you know, and, and, and thinking that they're good. What should this hand really bad? <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like it. He hates it. I mean. Yeah, he just, he, the problem is he, he, he caught himself up by creating a big pot. It's a little bit of hindsight, isn't it? Because obviously everything's conspired to make this horrible for him. Wow, that's a really nice fall. Wow. That's a really, really excellent fall. Wow. It's tough with all the with all the money that's in there. That's a that's a really tough fall to make. I, I think that's an excellent play. Evgeny is, I would say, uh, known as sort of a more calculated player. He's extremely good and extremely capable of making big moves, but I think he's known as a little bit of a more conservative player, at least pre-flop. I mean, he's not going to be the person that's going to five-bet shove it in light. Despite not winning last year, Evgeny played what I thought was brilliant poker the entire time, and he's just a really great and fearless poker player. Uh, he's a really, really tough player, and. Uh but we respect each other a lot. Strategy is definitely uh, starting to play a factor now. Uh, the, the people in the middle of the pack know that they need two strong finishes and they can't really afford a bagel. The people with more points can start to attack. Well, I, I do have uh, a few things planned. I, I don't really want to give my strategy away right now, but I, I did study the, the points, the point structure, and I am aware of how many points everyone has and I, I plan to use that to my advantage today if the right spots arise. I'm willing to buy the call. 
<laughs> Scott wants to buy the ham. <laughs> That's the incredible thing. They were all off the table, but they thought it was better to go off and, and talk about the action. I'm not sure what was in the pod, though. Okay, so it's like 3.2 to 1. I'm locking it up. I'm locking it up. You want to bet more? Oh, my God. Did you see his cards or anything like that? No. Okay. So you accurately do not know 100% who wins this bet? That's a Absolutely. No, oh, Yevgeny statement. would never do that. Hey, team. <laughs> you're looking for He's more? looking to bet more. No, That's right. Has he told I'm, them now what he had? Done. Yeah, let's press. I, I want to press. Yeah. Right. Do, <laughs> do they know yet that he this has jets? This is great. This is great. <laughs> you promise the same I don't know if he told them yet. Yeah, no I'll let you guys bet more, but at a lower price. Nope. No. <laughs> I have two mitts on my team. Yeah. yeah. Tom does have two mitts on his team. <laughs> if it was just me, you could fit it up. Oh. I have two prop bet mitts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to keep Tom in line here. I'm, I'm surprised that he bet more. I, 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 I give him a lot of credit. Nope. Uh, Tom Dwan is, has raised this. The blinds uh, still two and four, and called by Elke with the sevens again, and Patrick. Patrick, who's down to 18,000, by the way, Eric. He's put in. Things are getting desperate. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes when you're in this spot, you feel like, well, you got to win something. So, you know, take a shot on a, you know, in a three-handed pot. Wow, he's... So there's a bet in the call, and he's, he's just considering whether or not it's worth taking all the odds. He was thinking, I almost had it for a second there, if Elke could have lost that pot. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tom Dwan can't raise oh, to wow. isolate, or he could even. Um... That would have been a, could have been a funny situation yeah. if, uh, if if Tom uh, if, if Elke folded. Yeah, the cards would have gotten over, and then then he would have drawn out on him. But there is a side pot. It's Patrick Antonius all in side pot between Dwan and Elke, and essentially Dwan has led the flop and gotten called. one of those cards, the ace, that's both a good bluffing card for Tom and a, and a card that's supposed to help his hand as well. Yeah, it's a, uh, Elke's just in an impossible spot here. There's no way he can call. This will be the end for Patrick Antonius unless that equity turns, turns good. 24%, not the worst spot. That's it. And he got there. So brutal. <laughs> Thanks for the lucky chips. Thank, Thank you for the chips, he says. Um, well, Patrick's idea of a short stack is uh, proved worthwhile anyway. Let himself get quite low. But up to 86,000, and now uh, a real good chance not to finish seventh place. It is turning out to be the most exciting heat of the Premier League season so far. The remaining players continue to go toe to toe for points after the break. Welcome back to Group A's third league match. It's Patrick Antonius at the bottom who's hoping to pick up the pace. Let's rejoin your commentary team. No, but it doesn't make a difference. Tom Dwan on top. <laughs> Most of the way through the second level. Um, I'll do another. All right. I'll do another thousand at three. Just in the scheme of this yep, whole discussion, first, Eric, which is a fascinating no, sort of microcosm of this one. game, no, the, no, the, the discussion three between three. Scott I'm and Tom and Yevgeny about whether or not Elke was bluffing. Um, do you think it has more to do with Tom and Scott just liking the price, or is it more to do with one of these guys 
knowing, being more familiar with Elkie's game. I mean, I think it's. I, I think when you know you're talking about three and a half to one on a bluff at the end. Uh, you know, that's just uh, because of the way it played. Because Elkie checked the turn. It just uh, three and a half to one just seems like uh, too big a price that, that he would be on a complete bluff there. And right. because he was low in chips and there was so much money in the pot, it's just very easy for him to move in and, and you know and, and hope that uh, if, if he were bluffing, you know, uh, hope hope that he can pick it up. Me meanwhile, I guess this is quite a quite a big hand. I've I've missed the action here, Eric. But Elkie raised the button and Jungleman called in the small blind, and then it went check call on the flop. Is that correct? Uh, I believe. Look at who I'm betting against, though. The actual. And for Jungleman, check call on the flop. Elkie's made the flush. Check call on the turn. That's a the turn. River could get messy. Jungle Man's in a tricky spot here. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really tough spot, especially with the A's coming on the river. But even no matter what Elkie bets, it's always going to be a decision between um, between calling and, and folding. It's not ever going to be a raise here, would you say? Uh, yeah, I would think so. 88. 88. 88, yeah. If it is just check bet call, check bet call, check bet, it, it's just a guess, right? It's. Yeah, I mean, Jungle Man's in the spot. The reason, the, the, the problem for him is that uh, Elki is in a spot where he easily could be bluffing once the once the spade comes in the turn, and uh, it certainly makes it a lot harder to fold when you when you've got three aces. Even though in truth it doesn't really matter, you were either good or you weren't. I mean, on the flop. When Elkie bets and Jungle Man calls, it's like he has an ace there so often that most people just shut down, don't they? If you're Elkie and, and don't have anything. Mm -hmm. What a pass that was! What an incredible one pass! Three, Jungle Man has just made look easy. I think that one's pretty bad. <laughs> I, I was talking to Raptor like a month and a half ago. About that. And uh, like for Jungle Man, that saved him 88,000. I guarantee you, if he uh, if he put his hand on offer <laughs> for the uh, five to two that was being offered by the pot. I wonder if he get get more. I don't know if we'd be able to keep up with this nonstop <laughs> betting. This this table needs its personal bookmaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was saying he got the first game with his rook off for even money, and then he got two to one on a second game, just having his knight off. No. Oh, that's why I was told that he then ran it back for a second game. Jack the space. The yeah. No, so Elkie's been a bit hot of late, two big hands, and hasn't gotten paid off on the river either time. Um, yeah, I mean, Elkie took a little bit of a risk. Uh, he bet that pretty strong on the river, and uh, allowing Jungle Man to get off it. But so often, you know, uh, it, because of the, that particular situation, you yeah, get called exactly. anyway. And, uh, and, um, well, that just what an amazing pass. I guess if you'd asked Jungle Man, and you don't seem that impressed, Eric, that maybe it was a lot more standard than. Um, no, I'm not saying it's standard. I think it, I, I think he made a he made a very tough play. Um, now this is a spot 
for jungle man where a lot of players would check back the turn uh wouldn't they with his hand two kings it went it went uh well it went check check on the on the flop right uh, no no it was check check bet call on the flop <laughs> Wow. They say, well, yeah, a lot of times so people will just jump in, in the, the turn. Of the kitchen. I was just thinking, you know, I was going to three-bet him as soon as he raised every button. You, and you just punish him for the max. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting three and a half to one. <laughs> uh. I think they'll all be happy with their three and a half to one, even even though they they're going to lose the bet. Yeah. When they find out he had two jacks. Well, well that's what... the smartest guy out of all of us. Just wait, <laughs> just wait until I want to hedge and then look at, <laughs> look at even money. <laughs> like that's the best bet out of everyone. Yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah. He'll buy it back. I, I might buy my bet back and just lock <laughs> up this one. You bet hedge. More kicking. <laughs> I want this. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get to, you know, it's like I was overexposed, so I hedged at two to one with the same people. I only would have done a K, so it was yes. all right. Okay, cool. Jenny is talking about uh, uh, arbitraging himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing confidence in his bet, and now he's well, thinking about betting even money. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very unusual. <laughs> I just, I don't know what he's waiting for. I can't wait till he tells him he has jacks. I mean, and then it's just, uh, you know, he's gonna be able to, to lay any price he wants. Maybe this is just one big hustle from Timo Do we bet, what if we bet, dollars? Euros? I guess dollars. Maybe we can get it up to euros. Tom, Tom Dwan. <laughs> no, we bet euros. I said that from the start. Oh, we did? Yeah. Making sure that the, the currency is agreed on. <laughs> it was pesos. <laughs> uh, an interesting line that Timoshenko has taken pre-flop just to call. Sort of completely under-representing his hand. Mm -hmm. And with the deuce of clubs on the turn, Scott may be trying to check and call here. And yeah, it's a funny card because it gives Scott the best hand, but he's getting a very good draw. You would imagine, Eric, right, that this is going to go check, check pretty often, that Timoshenko is just going to knuckle this. Um, or does that card make it more likely that since that he's beat and he should be thinking about bluffing? Yeah, I mean, he can go either way. You know, it, it, it's uh, it's certainly a spot where he might consider bluffing. It certain, Scott hasn't sh shown to have anything much. But then again, Scott is capable of calling him down. So, uh, I mean, he does... He, I, I guess that's the danger for him is, is, is by betting, even if Scott has a bad hand, he's going to call with any hand that beats him. Seaver playing the queen deuce to maximum extraction, I guess. Don't usually see much action with the queen deuce. But yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good to get value out of your queen deuce, that's for sure. So what's our current action? <laughs> Just like, no, it's like 2 to 1.600. Yeah. What is it? We're, we're risking 2K to win 6,500. All right, that's what I thought. I thought it was euros, too, for the record. Yeah, yeah, it is euros. Seven raise, 10,000. Yeah, that's the first <laughs> thing I said, because I wanted that clarified. I, I love Yevgeny's confidence originally, but I'll be really disappointed if this is the end of the bet, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think they're through with it. Let us risk 3K to win 10,000. 27, 1, 4. Duan's open this. And the three bet from Elki. Is it an easy fold? It's an easy fold with the ace jack, unless unless you start to think it's not. I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a hand that Tom wants to play out of position. Um, but, you know, it's always, uh, he's, he's got a very um, skeptical mind, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, yep. He's used to, you know, these, these guys uh, used to three betting themselves back and forth, and so he's taking a flop, which is... Sam Trickett was saying that he feels like Tom Dwan has developed a really good stare in the last six months that he used to kind of just stare off into space a little bit, but he's actually become a really good person watcher now. Yeah, know. he's been working on his stare. I think that he, he, did, he took some lessons from Phil Ivey <laughs> and uh, that, that, that it paid off. He used to have more of like a 20-foot sort of glassy-eyed stare. Now he's... Yeah. It's increased his range up to about. It's a, it's especially impressive given that he's tired. <laughs> like, normally you'd think he might be too, in the old days, he'd be too tired to stare. <laughs> he's going an extra mile. And you were talking before about that big heads up match that Dwan and Jungle Man either started or however far they got. Jungle Man was a, a, a fairly decisive uh, was decisively ahead at the at the point they reached, which surprised a well, lot nice. of people. Um, yeah, I think it was you know it was as Tom was just coming up, um, and uh, although he was certainly well known in the poker community, uh, it gave him more national prominence and well, we international prominence. Uh, you know the fact that there was this young kid who was willing to challenge anyone in the world to a heads-up match, and give them odds. You know, uh, when you're talking about uh, basically challenging anyone in the world, uh, that's a pretty strong statement. That's and the three bet from Seaver. Sorry, Eric. Yeah, yeah. This is I mean, this is a it's a good spot to, to three bet because he's got uh, he's got a hand that he doesn't really want to play, um, but it is a pair, and uh, Chunga man. Thinking about what to do here. I've talked with Jungle Man a couple couple times over the course of this Premier League, and he certainly is aware. I think he he lumps kind of Scott and Vanessa together in sort of. I know they're three betting me a little light sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, not just him, obviously, but. Um, but 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 still, it's a it's a big four bet here, and yeah, a four bet in this spot is even stronger than in a normal spot because of this uh, sit and go format. Uh, these, these chips are so valuable. Jungle Man is risking a huge percentage of his chips on that play. It got through a great leaderboard dynamic as well. Even though Scott Seaver has more chips than Daniel Cates, so we get to the end of two levels, uh, Jungle Man having those extra points on the leaderboard might be able to put in a little more pressure on. Vanessa's girlfriend Miranda Forrester has been sitting on the rail watching some of these heats. Is it difficult to uh, to be here watching her up there on the table? It's, you know, it's nerve-wracking because this is heat three, and so the pressure's sort of on. I mean, this is such a unique format, the way that the points are tallied. I think it just changes the strategy a bit, and so it is a little anxiety-producing to see how she's going to fare today. I just saw that she's uh, currently, like, sixth out of seven in chips, and so, yeah, it's definitely, you know, makes you nervous. How much time has she been spending uh, looking at the point structure, figuring out her strategy? I think, honestly, the way her brain works, she just looks at a format for something and immediately she just like internalizes strategy. I can't even explain it to you. Her brain is like a computer and she immediately starts talking with me about, well, if this happens and this happens and if this person gets two like firsts, then they're going to play like this and heat three and four and then if, you know, so. Um, she doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, I don't think, but it's definitely something that's like always in the back of her mind. All the calculations are up there yeah. constantly. Like the ticker, like the NASDAQ, like it's just it's strange. 
This is where Vanessa is at the right. moment, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thanks. We return to the stunning Austrian city Vienna after the break as Group B's third league match continues to play out. Group B's third league match is currently underway, and these are the current league standings. After Ben Wilanowski was knocked out, today he received no points and can no longer qualify for the final table. For the rest of the field, it's very tight, and those in the elimination zone are desperate for big points. The blinds are now up to 3,000, 6,000, and players are continuing to chat about their various sites. Why are you telling me that I have a 1,900? That's so sick. <laughs> now that Patrick has entered the Boss. fray, he, he is the master negotiator, isn't he, when it comes to prop bets? I mean, which side is he betting? I have is no it, idea. Everybody, is everybody betting the same side? I have no oh, idea. But no, thank you. Better I, I, I've just heard that Better Patrick has a, a reputation for being a, a, a merciless Patrick negotiator when it comes to prices Patrick and terms. Play. and. You well, now it's pretty obvious that we're pretty sure about it. So. Oh, fuck. Now when I think about it. I mean, no, not a bad no. reputation. <laughs> just a <laughs> gonna run the... reputation for toughness. I'll take 20 to 1. <laughs> what was the bet? I don't even know what that the bet That the 10 was not a spade, that the 5 was a spade. Oh, that's what the bet is? Yeah. If the 8 wasn't a spade, it's a wash. Well, we know the 8 was a spade. So they've got all space, kinds of different bets going now. They do. It's really uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's making it hard to concentrate on the action. I mean... But obviously well, so you're, you guys aren't betting on the deep. equity, you're betting on what the cards on the flop. Right? So what do you bet on the equity? I'm, I'm betting based on their information. Not my, not sort of my confidence of, the, of the whatever. How do you start a bidding war instead of trying to split action? Like, <laughs> teamwork would have gotten us, like, great odds. Check, check on the flop. You if you know you're right. And That's what I feel like. I know I'm right. This idea about that Yevgeny would sort of bet. Well, I guess I have 100 at 10 to 1. Is that the, or 8 to 1. A lot you know, of hands on the turn. The fours is so bad that you kind of just have to they bet, a right? Where they were both just so sure they were right. Yeah. It was, what is the gender of the security it's card? A, it's, it's a funny card a for Tom because it gives it's Tom a straight draw, uh, but there's a potential flush on board. Uh, so they started offering each other odds to take the side. Like, I'll give you two to one if you take game out. I'll give you three to one, four to one. Chewie took seven to one. As it turns out, um, I guess Tom should be able to win this pot on the river, unless. Well, I don't know. I think that uh, if Kenny is probably going to check it, but I don't. Uh, Anyways, they were both wrong, and the, the layer got I, I'm not so sure that he's going to so fall to a bet. He'd have to be convinced that uh, Tom had a jack. Seven check. Two there. Right you are. You're going to get it. It was a good check by Tom because Tom. Uh, I think you can do the 31. It was a bad card to bluff. Well, it's a, it's a tough card to bluff, but I think he probably was going to get called. It's really just a sign of good faith. He's held tight, Yevgeny. Will you lay 20 to one that the tunnel's a heart? Protected his chips, and and at this stage his. Uh, I mean, still sort of I'm protecting his confidence against an onslaught of pressure. It was 10 5 9. 10 8 5. 10 8 5. It was 10 9 8, I think. 10 8 5. 10 9 8 5. So you guys are betting on what suit? I have 500. Play your hand. 10 not being a spade. That's 20 to 1. No, it's 20 to 1. Yeah, but do I still have 100? I still have 100 at 18. And Patrick's got about 13 big blinds. <laughs> he was determined to get absolute most that he can squeeze out of them, too. Ah, well, this is interesting, because uh, he doesn't have much left. Uh, Tom may just move him yeah. in here. And, and, and Eric, the young guys would have just shoved with Antonius's uh, hand and stack in, into one player. Mm -hmm. I, I think. 
to solve sweating on a memory base. Like, that's why. That's sick. I was that's gonna wait for a memory for you actually. Actually, if Tom knew how bad my memory was, he would have given me better. And she has the worst all the, the, the other young guys would have just shoved with Tom's hand as well. <laughs> Perhaps. Because I'm pretty sure. You're that's right. a very good spot for. Patrick, I do have the worst, I have the world's worst idea, he can so. bet this with confidence. Even if Tom has the king, he's got he's got a lot of outs. Um, no. Wow, got checked. And now, I mean, is Patrick about to find a way to lose this pot? Is, is you could be very results oriented, Eric, but why check the flop? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think he may just be concerned about points now, and and it's critical for him to move up. You know, even one or two points could could make the difference between uh, making the final. And if you just follow that train of thought, then even doubling up is is not that big a deal compared to making sure you just stay in until someone else gets knocked out. Yeah, exactly. And now he's in a very interesting spot because he has to feel like Tom, if he had a decent ace, would have raised him before the flop. Uh, so I wouldn't have been surprised if he if he if he raised Tom in that spot. Six, Amazing stuff from Antonius. Amazing. Especially when you know it's Antonius. Yeah, he's really hanging tough. When you know it's him and when you know he's been up all night, <laughs> he hasn't slept well, he's sick, and he's still focused. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very, very impressive. <laughs> he's, uh, he's obviously got a high amount of confidence in his game plan, Patrick Antonius. Not, not that it's going to be effective, but that this is the right, smartest well, well, yeah, way to go about one. what he's trying to do. And in some ways, it is the most extreme example we've seen of leaderboard tactics um, dictating strategy in this Premier League so far. See, that's far. where Patrick gets to steal your action. <laughs> all I know is you shut her down for 2,000 euro at 20 to 1. I, I love the aspect of this betting, which part of it is not revealing your position until you're absolutely sure that you can get the money down. Um, can I toss a little bit in the I just want to toss a like a one euro coin to someone just to try and get 30 euro. I want a one euro max. You can have a piece of my actual. <laughs> you don't need to take any. I just fucked up the horse. All right, did you roll? She's kind of in. It seems like you did. So the, the betting is just get busy mode. It seems like Eric uh, Vanessa. I mean, I might just just trying to make something happen. Yeah, she's pushing you a little bit. Scott's calling with the exact same hand that Yevgeny did. Makes a really nice play. Oh right. He, he, he's, he must feel like he's got a lot of fold equity here. Um, does he? I'm surprised Vanessa was thinking about calling this because she's got Scott behind her. And uh, that's got to be pretty marginal, even if she didn't. Looks like she's just thinking, if I go all in, I can get Scott out and I'll flip with him. It's not going to happen. Not really, but... Seaver's going to call Antonius in a brilliant shape to double up. He's... Um, yeah, that was ideal for him. He got rid of the queen nine, and he's against the well, one dead queen, and, and, and he's got the jack. That's good, but it feels vulnerable to Patrick Antonius. Yeah, it's not bad for Scott, that's for sure. I guess the odds didn't change that much. Just the nine or the ace. And now Patrick's in very good shape. 
Has to fade an ace or a nine, with an ace being a split. Oh, not a split, sorry. And he's tough to finish off this Patrick Antonius, as he's proved, whether it was. These guys do not want to hang it around, because if he gets a hold of chips, he's such a tough player. Well, that and now he's got a dangerous well, enough stack actually, with over 100,000 that uh, he would impact anybody's stack at the table. Absolutely. Also, as long as Antonius, Yevgeny, and Jungleman, as long as they remain at this table, it, it's going to really um, prevent the mid-table stacks from uh, doing anything but try to get in the playoff zone. We're reaching a crucial stage here at the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5. Join us next time when Group B's third league match concludes here in Vienna. Respect. Show me the respect. Who knows what I think sometimes? I just had to outlast the two of you. I was thinking about this. You win. We both profited. So sick. So brutal.